Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to lead you in worship this afternoon. My name is Jeff Johnson. I'm the deacon or lay minister out at St. John Lutheran in Pulaski. And over these next few Wednesdays, we're going to worship and we're going to look at the 41st Psalm, uh, a Psalm of King David, looking at all the different challenges that he faced during his time as king. So it's my pleasure to be here to lead you in worship again this, this afternoon. Uh, I was telling some other people, sometimes I come here and the roads are icy and the ditches are full of snow. Uh, I prefer 50 degrees and sunny much more than, than, than that. So uh, we ask our Lord's blessing on our worship this morning as we begin with our opening hymn. Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will be glad and exult in you. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who will hear me, will bear trust you, Let us make our confession to our God, seeking his grace and forgiveness as we sing. Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
We pray. O God, who gives strength to the weak and light to those who are in darkness, grant us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, that through him we may know you more completely. Assure us that all things are made to work for our good through our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we may with hopeful hearts await the glory of his kingdom of eternal grace. With boldness and confidence, we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for today is from Jeremiah chapter 9. Who is the man so wise that he can understand this? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined and lay waste like a wilderness so that no one passes through? And the Lord says, because they have forsaken my law that I set before them, and have not obeyed my voice or walked in accord with it, but have stubbornly followed their own hearts and have gone after the Baals as their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will feed this people with bitter food and give them poisonous water to drink. I will scatter them among the nations, uh, the sword after them until I have consumed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak responsibly to this series psalm, which again is from Psalm 41. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words. While his heart gathers iniquity, when he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say, a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. The epistle lesson reading for today is from 2 Timothy chapter 3. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeaceable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women, burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth, just as James and Jamboree's opposed Moses, so these men also oppose the truth. Men corrupted in mind and disqualified regarding the faith, but they will not get very far, for their folly will be plain to all, as that was for as that for as was that of those two men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise now for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the pa Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. And the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. 
but they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated as we sing our next hymn. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you have any enemies? Are you someone else's enemy? Hopefully we try to live our lives answering no to both of these questions. Yet over time and across history, enemies do develop in this world. This world has been damaged by sin and sin's consequences. I think we could each spend some time thinking through the Ten Commandments, especially the second table of the commandments, commandments four through ten, that talk about our love for our neighbor, to see opportunities for enemies to develop. Personally, I'm kind of drawn to commandments nine and ten as I thought about this, coveting or sinfully desiring what our neighbor has when it comes to possessions or relationships. You see, rather than being content with how God has met our needs. We, we want our neighbor's stuff, right? We want what's in their garage, maybe what's hanging inside their house or what's sitting in their safe or bank account. We desire things like their reputation, their friends, the way that their family works, or maybe even their spouse. And taking actions on these sinful desires can certainly develop enemies in people's lives. As I mentioned, we're covering the 41st Psalm in this midweek series, and we're looking at Psalm 41 today as David prays about those who hate him, those who imagine the worst for him. He is, of course, speaking about his enemies. It's likely that in our everyday lives, we have few enemies as evil as the ones that are threatening to take David's actual life. Yet we can never ignore in our life and our times the dangerous risks that come from the devil, the world, and yes, even our own sinful selves as we live our lives here on earth. Well, King David certainly had mortal enemies, men who plotted and schemed to take away his earthly life, and they were motivated by different things, some by gaining his power or his influence or his riches by his death. And our Lord Jesus Christ, well, he also had mortal enemies during his time here on earth. 
those who plotted and schemed to take his earthly life for their own reasons. There were treacherous and murderous men that schemed against David. As we heard in those verses from Psalm 41, they imagined the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out for me. And Christ Jesus likewise endured the deadly designs of murderers. The chief priests and the elders of the people who plotted against him in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him, as Matthew's Gospel tells us. For you and I, we might consider our enemies likely less violent. Maybe your enemies are people that are just plain mean to you, or people that speak evil about us, or people that seem oddly happy when we suffer, or people who selfishly take but refuse to give, people who willingly commit injustice and leave us feeling miserable, and people who sometimes make us wish maybe that we were actually dead. But perhaps the worst thing that such people can do is to think that they can get away with this. And rest assured that those who treat you badly will not get away with it in the end. David's enemies thought that they would get away with these injustices against him. They poured out a deadly thing for him, and they foolishly said concerning him, he will not rise again from where he lies. But they were wrong. Because those that die do not remain dead. All people shall rise, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt, as Daniel writes. Jesus spoke the truth that gives shape to all eternity when he declared in the fifth chapter of John's Gospel. He said, Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear it will live. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs and hear his voice will come out, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. Those words speak to the certainty of the resurrection. And David lived in that certainty too. Jesus of Nazareth is himself that certainty. And you and I, we've been baptized into the certainty of the resurrection by our baptism into faith in Jesus Christ. Do you not know that you have been baptized into Christ? You were baptized into his death. If you've been united with him in a death like this, we shall certainly be reunited, reunited with him in a resurrection like his. Now the certainty of the resurrection gave David some very interesting weapons that he could call on when he was in distress from his enemies. He could live, despite his enemies, in confidence and hope. Even when those enemies said that he will not rise again from where he lies, David knew very well that he would indeed rise, and that knowledge gave David a certain amount of comfort and power because he had what we have, an eternal perspective. David's faith in the resurrection indicated that whatever else might have been required that he suffer, his suffering wouldn't last forever, and the Psalms that David wrote, they're full of the hope of the resurrection, even though many times he was at risk of dying. The resurrection is why G David would confidently pray in those Psalms with confidence, I will not be afraid of the many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. He also said, I will tell of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. And again, he said, I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Relief from suffering is the first comfort of the resurrection. And the second comfort is the word that we're here today to hear about. The word is vindication. Vindication. It's when all the wrongs that get, get made right Vindication happens when those who suffer losses get their losses returned to them. Have you ever suffered unanswered injustice so that you long for and await vindication? Well, you're certainly not alone. There are generations of Christians who have gone before you and I, and they too are waiting for ultimate vindication. They cry out from the book of Revelation, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you judge and avenge our blood? All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. David knew that all of his enemies would win a battle here or there. The ultimate war, the ultimate victory would be his 
and all believers in, in, the, in the Redeemer in the final judgment. David knew that he would be vindicated, and you shall be too. That's why David could also pray, and you and I could pray with him, again through some more psalm verses, when he said, All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall, t- shall turn back and shall be put to shame in a moment. And his mischief returns upon his own head, speaking about his enemies. And finally, again from Psalm 41, By this I know that you, Lord, delight in me. My enemies will not shout in triumph over me. But you have set me in your presence forever. In your presence. In God's holy presence. So, how do we know that David's enemies didn't get the final word, that they didn't finally get away with it? More to the point, how we, do we know that your enemies <coughs> and mine won't finally get away with, with what they've done to, to you and to I? Well, we know this because the enemies of Jesus did not get away with their plans against him. The enemies of Jesus were so desperate that he not rise again from where he lies, <coughs> excuse me, that they posted a guard and they sealed the tomb following Jesus' death on Good Friday. From Matthew's Gospel, again, it says, The chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, remember how this imposter said that while he was still alive, after three days, I will rise? Therefore, order the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go <coughs> excuse me, and steal him away from the people. He's risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go and make it as secure as you can. They went and they made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. The plan to destroy Jesus didn't work. Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday morning. God the Father crowned him with glory and honor, and Jesus was vindicated in his resurrection, and you shall be too. So, those who have committed injustices against you shall not go unanswered forever. Those who have harmed you have truly only harmed themselves. You shall gain back all that's been taken away from you by selfish hands, and you shall rise again from where you are, finally laid down, and King David shall rise with you in the power of Christ who rose before both of you. And you shall say on that great day with David, with Jesus, and with all the people of faith in Jesus, that you have upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Final vindication will be ours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Continue in our worship with our offering. We pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. We rise to pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, give us your Holy Spirit that we might deny ourselves, take up the crosses that you give, and follow your Son through this troubled life into heaven. Prepare us to give up our lives, knowing that Christ has already saved them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, give the church and all her servants grace to fulfill the ministries to which you have committed them. Grant each of us the strength to confess Christ boldly before the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, teach us to shun neither our Lord's suffering nor our own. When we endure persecution or ridicule for being your children, give us faith and perseverance. 
As, we have, as you have promised us, deliver us out of the hand of the wicked and redeem us from the grasp of the ruthless. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, Abraham was only, one, was only one when you called him, but you blessed and multiplied him. Protect mothers and child and equip fathers to lead and raise their households in your fear and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, all kingship belongs to you and you rule over the nations. Bless Joe, our president, and those who govern, that they may rule us wisely in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Great physician, heal and restore, especially those who we remember on our prayer list and within our own hearts now. Give them your holy care and strength to bear their crosses, that they may endure and see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, receive our praise this day for St. Peter and his confession that Jesus is the Christ. We rejoice that your Son builds his church upon this rock and that the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Keep us in this faith all our days through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We join together in Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Receive the benediction of your Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us all. Amen. We join in our final hymn. Please be seated. Again, thank you for the opportunity to come out here and I'll lead you in worship. I know the Round Robin, the pastors enjoy this, to get out and see some fresh faces and some new faci different facilities, and I think we get good feedback from the congregations as well, because you get to hear somebody besides your pastor. So, um, a blessing all around. So, God's continued blessings to you today, this week, and always. I'm going to hand it off to the principal here.